Okay, welcome back, guys. We're going to talk about something called step functions today. Um, and these these are pretty interesting. So they look exactly like they sound. Um, so this graph is going to look like actual steps. Um, and really what it is is it's different pieces of different functions. Um, and those different functions just happen to be horizontal lines, okay? So the slope of these functions is always going to be zero. And so that's why they look like steps because they're just going to be um, these little line segments on your graph, okay? So the weird thing about it is the notation, okay? So if you look at um, number one here, you're going to see this is how a step function is written, okay? So just like any other function we've studied, it starts with f of x equals, right? Y equals. The difference is that there's three parts to this specific step function, okay? So the way we read this is we say f of x equals 5 when x is between negative 2 and 0. f of x is equal to 3 when x is between 0 and 2. f of x is equal to 1 when x is between 2 and 4. Okay, so the way that we do this is we take it piece by piece and we graph each piece separately. Okay, so if we just think about this for a second, what would the line f of x equals 5 look like or y equals 5? What would that look like? It would have a y-intercept at 5, right? And then because the slope is 0, it would go straight across. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm graphing that line, but I'm only graphing a piece of it. I'm only graphing that line between negative 2 and 0, okay? So one thing that might help you is to think about what the table would look like of this. I'm just going to quickly write over here. So we know that we're going from negative 2 to 0. So I'm going to show you, there's my, my points, right? And basically, when um, each of those numbers is there, its y-coordinate is going to be 5. Okay, so when x is negative 2, y is 5. When x is negative 1, y is 5. When x is 0, y is 5. So that might help you when you go to graph this, okay? Um, another thing I want to point out is the inequalities that are, that are there. So when I go to graph the point negative 2, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm going to have a closed circle because I'm including that point in this line segment. Okay, the difference is when I go to graph the point 0, 5, I need to have an open circle because it's saying less than, not less than or equal to. So that point is not included. And so our line looks just like this. Now, you could have put a point at um, negative 1, 5 also. Typically with step functions, you only show the first and the last point of the line segment, okay? But you absolutely could have put that point there too if you wanted to. Okay, let me erase that. So that's the first step. The second step is f of x equals 3 or y equals 3. So again, y-intercept would be 3, slope would be 0. So we're going to have a line that's horizontal and has all y coordinates of 3. So my first point would be 0, 3, and that would be a closed circle because it's including it. It's less than or equal to. And that line segment is going to go all the way to when x equals 2. But that is going to be an open circle because it's less than, not less than or equal to. And then we connect it, so there's our step. And then the last one is when f of x equals 1, and that's going to go between 2 and 4. So again, we have a line where all of the y-coordinates are 1, and in this case, we're including the first point, because it says less than or equal to 2. And then when x is 4, we are not including it, and so that's open. So that's what our step function looks like, okay? Um, so if you think about this as being a function, is it a function? Could I use the vertical line test to test that? Well, yes, it is a function because even if I were to draw, let me just draw a line here so you guys can see this. Even if I were to say, I'm going to draw this line through. I'm trying not to cover up my drawing here. 
Um, even if I say, okay, there's my vertical line to test it, even though it passes through two points, notice one of those points is open, so it's not actually included. And so this does pass the vertical line test, which is pretty interesting. Okay. All right. So the, the next thing we're going to do with this is we're going to state the domain and range. So the domain, if you look at like furthest left, furthest right, the furthest left this graph goes is negative two. And it's included because it was a closed circle. So we're going to do bracket negative two. The furthest right our graph goes is four, but because it has an open circle on four, we don't include it. Okay, for the range, so the range only includes three numbers. What can Y be? Y can be one, Y can be three, or Y can be five. So when that happens, we use roster form to write our range. So Y could be one, Y could be three, and Y could be five, and that's it, nothing in between. So if you remember, we talked about discrete versus continuous. This would be, and if you think of the range, this would be a discrete range. Okay, all right, let's try another example. So here's another one with three steps. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna graph g of x equals seven, and we're gonna graph that between when x is negative five and negative one. Okay, so the first point we're gonna have is the point negative five, seven. looks like this, and it's a closed circle because notice negative five is included. And that first step goes all the way until x is negative one. But negative one is not included, so that's an open circle. So there's our first line segment, our first step. Okay, the second one is g of x equals three. So this is going to go from when x is negative one to three. So my first point is negative one, three. And it's closed because it includes the negative one. And that goes all the way until x is three, which happens to be open. And then the final line segment or the final step here is g of x equals negative one between um, x being three and seven. So at negative one, let's see here, my first point would be three, negative one, and it would be closed. And that's gonna go all the way to seven, four, five, six, seven, and it's gonna be open. So again, this is a function because if you try and draw any vertical line, no matter what, it's not going to hit two points anywhere. All right, so for our domain, the furthest left our graph goes is negative five, and it includes it. And the furthest right our graph goes is seven, but it does not include it. So it's an open circle there. And our range, again, is discrete. It can only be three things. So we're gonna write it in roster form. It could be negative one, it could be three, or it could be seven. All right, let's take a look at another example here. So now we have, instead of um, intervals for x, the first one is saying f of x equals one when x is greater than zero. So this is actually not a line segment. There's gonna be an actual line here, or ray, we could call it. Um, so when x is zero, y is one, but it's an open circle. So my first point is going to be zero, one with an open circle. But then it shows that um, y is one any time after that. And so it's not ever going to end. It's just going to be a line forever in that direction. So we need an arrow there. Okay. Um, for the second part, y equals zero when x equals zero. What does that mean? It means there's a single point there. So when x is zero, y is zero the point zero, zero, right there. And then the last part, when y is equal to negative one, x is less than zero. So anything less than zero, we have 
a y value of negative 1. So my first point, again, is going to be when x is 0, but now y is negative 1, and it's an open circle. And so anything less than that, so I'm shading this way, anything less than that has a y value of negative 1. So it looks a little funny. Okay, but again, it's a function. Vertical line test passes the vertical line test. Okay, so our domain, what is our domain? The furthest left our graph goes is negative infinity. And there are no gaps. It covers everything all the way until positive infinity. The range, again, is a discrete range, so we're going to use raster form here. So I could either have negative 1 or 0 or positive 1 for the range. All right, let's try graphing one more, and then we're going to look at two real-life applications here. Okay, so for this one, f of x equals negative 4 when x is less than negative 4. Okay, so our first point is going to be negative 4, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's going to be an open circle because it's less than negative 4, not less than or equal to. And so it's saying when x is anything less than negative 4, y will be negative 4. And so my line is actually a ray is going in that direction. Um, the second step here is actually a line segment. So this is saying when x is between negative 4 and 0, y is 6. So our first point would be at negative 4, 6. And it would be closed because now we're including negative 4. And that line segment is going to go all the way until x is 0. So 0, 6 is our endpoint here and it's open because it does not include the zero. Okay, so then we have y is equal to 2 between 0 and 5. So our first point is going to be 0, 2, and that's going to be included since it's less than or equal to. And that's going to go all the way until when x is 5, and it's going to be open since it does not include the 5. And then my last piece here is y is equal to negative 3 when x is greater than or equal to 5. So um, my point here is going to be 5, negative 3, and it's going to be closed. And then it's saying for any x greater than that, it's negative 3. So I'm going to have a line goes out into the right here. Okay, so let's talk domain. So looking from left to right, it looks like the furthest left my graph goes is negative infinity. And if I kind of look and see and make sure that there aren't any gaps, I can see that every x value is in fact covered. And so the furthest right it goes is actually infinity. So negative infinity to positive infinity. So the last part would be the range, which means it's another discrete range. So you would have from negative 4, negative 3, 2, and 6. Those are the four different possibilities for your range values. Okay, so you might be thinking, where the heck would I ever use this? This is a bizarre function, but believe it or not, um, these actually are used in different scenarios. So the first way that it's used is in postage. Um, so it says, suppose that it costs 50 cents for the first minute of a long distance call and 20 cents for each additional minute T or fraction of a minute. Write a step function that models the situation and then graph the step function. Okay, so what this means is that, um, oh, we're not doing postage, sorry, we're doing... <laughs> I was distracted. My family keeps walking in here. Um, we're doing phone calls. The next one is about postage. So basically they're saying, okay, if you're calling long, long distance, you're going to pay 50 cents for that first minute. And then every minute after that, you're going to pay 20 cents. Okay. 
So they have in the table here um, your input being the time in minutes, so how long you were talking on a long distance call, and then your output or your Y is your cost. Okay, so if you look, when you talk between zero and one minutes, so basically like one second, right? Not even one second, it could be half of a second. Um, just can't be zero. You don't get charged if you don't talk at all. Um, so between zero and one minutes, you are being charged 50 cents, okay? And then between one and two minutes, you're being charged that 50 cents plus another 20 cents for that second minute. So now you're being charged 70 cents. So then if you say, okay, well, between two and three minutes, I would be charged that 50 cents plus 20 times those two extra minutes, which would be 50 plus 40 or 90 cents. And then the last one, if I talk between three and four minutes, it's 50 plus 20 times those additional three minutes, which is 110 cents. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to actually graph this. And um, we can show that by just looking at the first quadrant because we don't have any negative time or negative cents. So let's go ahead and first label our axes. So this is the time in minutes. And then this is the cost in cents. Okay, so it looks like we need to go from zero to four minutes. I'm going to space these out, and I'm going to do, let's go up to five. It spaces that out nicely. And then we need from 50 cents to 110 cents. So if I start at zero, I'm not going to be able to fit up to 110 cents. So I'm actually going to create a line break here. So line break just shows that you're skipping a lot of numbers, and then you're going to start counting consistently. So I'm going to say 50, 70, 90. So I start at 50, and then I start counting by 20. So that line break um, accounts for that. Okay, so if we go ahead and we graph this, um, we know that we're paying 50 cents between zero and one minute. So at zero minutes, I'm not paying anything, so that's an open circle. At one minute, or in anything in between, I'm paying 50 cents. So that's my first step of my step function. Then I talk about um, talking between one and two minutes. So if I talk for one minute, I'm still only being charged for that 50 cents, but anything above a minute, I'm being charged 70 cents. So that's why I need an open circle on 70 right here, because I can't have two different prices for the same amount of talking. Right? If I'm talking for one minute, I can't be charged 50 cents and 70 cents. It has to be one. So that's an open circle. And then all the way until two minutes, which is closed, I would be charged 70 cents. Okay, same idea for the next part. If I'm being charged for anything between two and three minutes, I pay 90 cents. Well, I have to have an open circle at two because I already am paying 70 cents for two minutes but then I'm gonna put a closed circle for three minutes at 90 cents. Okay, and then our last interval here um, is between three and four minutes. So again, it's 110 cents, but we're not paying 110 cents at three minutes. That was already included in the previous interval, but the four would be included. And so this would keep going in this fashion if you were to continue on, you know, between four and five minutes, between five and six minutes, and so on. Um, but that is a real-life application of a step function. Okay, so now as I was saying before, let's look at a postage, postage example. So according to the United States Postal Service in 2014, first-class letters are weighed and priced as shown in the chart at the right. Which of the following graphs correctly displays this information regarding the pricing of first-class letters? Okay, so they tell us if the weight is not over an ounce, you're gonna pay 49 cents. If it's not over two ounces, you're gonna pay 70 cents, and so on. And so we have to choose which of these graphs represents that. Well, hopefully right away, you're gonna eliminate choices one and two because we are looking at flat rates for each of these weights or these intervals of weights, 
And so that should be a key that this is, in fact, a step function. Okay, so one thing you might want to think about is what does it mean when it says the weight is not over one ounce? To me, that means that anything between zero and one would be included in that cost. And then the weight not being over two ounces would mean to me that it's between one and two. Okay, and so on. Two, not including it, to three and then not including three, all the way to 3.5. So looking at the graph, which one shows that? It would have to be choice four. Okay, so we have between zero and one, we're paying 49 cents. Between one and two, we have open circle, closed circle. We're paying 70 cents and so on. So choice four would be the answer for that. All right, guys, great job.